Check out this cool little 20 amp solar charge controller. Fits in the palm of your hand. Let's see what it's made of. So here's a little battery of Sunrock 20. When you get it in the box, I've not taken it out of the box yet. You can see it gives you your specs right there on the box. 30 volts, open circuit max on 12 volts, 60 volts on 24 volt. And there's your power ratings, 300 for 12, 600 for 24. So let me show you what you get. You get your quick start guide, your manuals, all that good stuff. We'll go over that before the end of the video. And you get the controller, a very small portable waterproof controller. Uh, it's SAE connected. And they include SAE adapters, so you can make your, your own connections on the end with PV connections or battery ring terminal connections, whatever you want. They even give you a little polarity reverser right here in case you need it for your SAE connections. So they get you started off right with enough parts to hook everything up. But if you don't feel like making all your own connections or don't have the equipment, well, you can buy them pre-made right here. So I picked up some pre-made ends. So here's an MC4 to SAE kit. Uh, now we got some parallel connector kits right here for PV, an extension cable, you know, battery of power's got all kinds of solar accessories and there's an MC4 extension kit. So uh, I'm gonna go hook all this up. I'm gonna see what it does. I got a dead battery sitting right here. Here's my dead battery. And I'm gonna use it on this uh, 12 volt battery with 200 watts uh, panel. So let's see what happens. Here are the panels for the test. Two 100 watt flex solar monocrystalline panels. These average between 70 to 80 watts per panel, depending on you know sunlight angle, temperatures, and all that. I've got them pretty close alignment. We're a little bit past noon, so not dead on the money overhead on the sun, but hey, I'm working with what I got, everybody. But I've got the battery of power extension cords connected right there. And for reference, these are in parallel, not series, because series will push them over the VOC on the controller. So I've got the extension cable hooked up to the panels right there. Coming over here, we can see uh, in the shade, hopefully. I uh, got the controller sitting right here. I've yet to turn it on, so we're going to learn step by step together on that. Here's the end of the cord coming from the solar panels over there and a dead repower flow battery. I did make up a set of quick terminals right here for this battery for demonstration. And these extension cables, by the way, are 10 gauge, so should easily carry the 20 amps this controller is purportedly able to handle doubt we're going to see anything much over 12 to 15 on those panels so uh, plenty of spare capacity uh, on this set of wires right here and here is the sunrock 20s charge controller i've not hooked it up we're going to do it step by step together uh, it's clearly labeled output right here which would be your battery and then input right here which would be your pv array sitting right here so i'm going to connect it to the battery because you always connect to your battery first so put that on there, be sure to check your polarity, make sure you got everything right when you're hooking stuff up. So that gave us an indicator light and we're on the gel setting. So showing 12 volts, which is what the battery is sitting at. So I've got the smart display right here. I'll show you that too. Should be right at 12 volts. So it's reading accurately between the battery display and the charge controller. That's, we're off to a good start. So to set this up, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Of course, we have a gel, AGM, and lithium iron phosphate settings. And it gives you a reference on the back to all the voltages. So right here, lithium iron phosphate will be a 14.4. So that's what we want, that's good. So I'll come right here and use the set enter button. Hold it down for just a couple of seconds like that. And let's see, we just scroll through right there and should be just another push to confirm. There we go, lithium iron phosphate, and we're at 12 volt. You can change to 24, but we're on 12. So and then hold it down again for three seconds, and that should, there we go, we're locked in. 12 volt lithium iron phosphate. So now I'll take my PV leads on the input side, of course. That's coming from those two parallel panels right there. I'll plug in right here, and we'll see how long it takes to track or how well it tracks. So I'm going to get you a dual read here in just a second once we do start tracking. There we go, we're picking up some current coming into the battery. So I'm expecting between 12 and 15. Those panels are hot and we're past noon. So, okay, we're at 12, 12.2. 12 so not doing too bad. You can see our indicator lights are flashing right here showing that we're charging, which of course we're not near 75% state of charge on this lithium iron phosphate battery. So I'll move that out of the way for just a second. Let me activate the smart 
BMS display for this JBD BMS and see what it is showing. And that's why I picked this battery. It's got a smart display that's very accurate. It is dead on the money with any charger or any discharge. So we're showing, uh, we're at 12.2 volts. We're at 12.3 amps. It bounced up to 12.4 right there for just a second. And what are we showing right here? We're showing 12.1. It's a little bit of discrepancy between what the battery of power is showing and what the JBD smart display is showing. And I know for certainty that this is dead on the money right here. So that's what we're gonna go by. And you can see the battery is currently at 2% state of charge. I'll let this run. I'll let this run for about a you know, half hour, hour or so and see what I, you know, what I can get just to just off of letting it run, make it get good and heat soaked in here and make sure nothing uh, erroneous happens while this is charging up. So I've got my Ella Joy solar panel multimeter connected to the parallel set of panels right here. You can see they're producing 21 volts with no load on them. I'm gonna auto track this set of panels to see what their maximum capabilities are so we can compare on that Sunrock charge controller. So I push the test button on this and it give it a second and it will test and track. There we go, testing. So these panels are capable of 162.8 watts. That's the best they can do currently. And just a quick comparison on another controller right here. Uh, within just a couple of minutes of swapping over, however long it took me to swap over, it's making 11.2 at 13 volts, what, 144, 145, something like that. Just showing you for a comparison. But this one's not waterproof. This one is. Another 10 second swap back to back to compare. Uh, so the battery of power is outproducing the other controller by 0.2 of an amp within 10 seconds of swapping each other. So. Uh, yeah, this one's performing better. So the little Sunrock 20 performed pretty good. I've got some data right here on the whiteboard for you. The competing brand, these were quick as I could swap leads out and things like that. Just so you can compare a competing 20 amp brand versus, you know, the Sunrock 20S from Battery of Power. So the best 11.3 amps times 13 volts on the competing brand that gave us 146.9. That's 90.2% of the Array Max tested on the Ella Joy meter, which the Array Max was 162.8 watts. The battery of power was capable of doing 11.5 amps times 13 volts, so that's 149.5, 91.8% of the Array Max. Yes, this charge controller has Bluetooth capabilities. You can download the Charge Pro app and you can see what this thing's doing from your phone. It gives you data logs and all kinds of things like that. I'm working on getting a tablet so we can look at these bluetooth things together trust me i'm working on that i know you want to see the bluetooth i'm trying my best i'm going to get you a little tablet here so we can check all this stuff out this controller is very easy to set up i hope i demonstrated how easy it is to switch between your battery type selections uh you know in the manual it shows you everything you know very detailed manual easy like i said just easy easy to use I'm gonna max out the controller and check its tracking so i got a power supply right there i got an energy meter i've got the battery of power sunrock and I've got the same Repower Flow battery. It charged for a little while in the sun, so we're a little bit higher state of charge than I showed you a minute ago. But I'll start start at 27 volts through the controller, see if it tracks and see what it can deliver, and then I'll max out the controller with this supply. All right, so connect it right here. Try to get you everything real time as it starts tracking so we can watch it together. Try to hold that for you right there. Okay, drug it down to 16 volts and then brought the voltage right back up trying to track. There's your, your voltage coming out of the power supply right there, 27.1. Controller is putting 15.7 into the battery purportedly, and there it's tracking again. Drop the current down, so you can kind of see what it's doing right there. Got roughly 8 amps from the power supply coming in. We've got 15.7 indicating on the charge controller, and then the battery is indicating 14.5. There it went, we jumped back up 16 amps. That's where it's tracking around off of that switch mode power supply right there. So now I got the power supply turned up to right at 30 volts. So that should be this controller's max. We'll see what it does. And plug it back in right here and see if we can get the full 20 amps into the battery. 29.76 29.8 volts come out of the power supply into the charge controller it's indicating 17.1 amps and then the battery 17 to 17.5 depending on how this is tracking 
and I'm going to turn up the power supply a little bit. It's going to exceed 30 volts here, so I'm curious to see what the controller does. Hope we don't uh, hope we don't burn it up, but I want to see what it can what it can do. I want to get that full 20 amps in there, so I'm going to bump it up a touch. So it is tracking above 30 volts. Their limit's a hard 30. I got 35 going into it right now, and that's getting me. That's getting me what I want at the battery. That's giving me 20 amps through the controller right there. The controller's indicating 19.5 to 19.9, depending on how it's tracking out of that switch mode supply right there. 20 amps on the battery. So I'm running at 35 volts. So it's over its voltage and it's still working. It's not triggered out, not alarmed. 300 watts out of the power supply. Still running at 35 volts coming in the controller. It's not complained yet. I wonder if I turn up to 40 what it will do. All right, I went above 40 volts. Right at 40 volts, it gave me an E10 error. Uh, I went on went on up a little bit on the uh, power supply. So that, you know, it's got protections in place for over voltage situations. So if you did put too high of a VOC panel on it, that's good to know that it's errors out and trips so you won't burn up the controller. That's a nice feature back down around 40 volts and see what the exact voltage is that it triggers the e10 error code at so if you can see that it's okay 40 volts it gave me the e10 again let me bump it down a little bit more nope e10 again at 38. all right down around 35 now that's about where it was so it's got a little bit of extra voc headroom in there so let's see if it'll do it at 35.8 it should do it this time. No, still still gave me an E10. All right, back below 35. So, all right, so I think it's hard limit is 35 volts. So it's got a little extra headroom on the volts open circuit for your PV for cold weather and things like that. That's good to see because their hard limit was 30. So let's go right below 35 and see if it'll track. That's 34.68 right now. So see if it'll stay online this time. I believe it will. So. Their actual true limit is 35 volts. So I let it track up again. You can see it drag that power supply down and it brings it right back up where it's tracking the maximum power point best it can off of switch mode power supply. So this is different than a solar array, of course, but still the principle is the same that it, it looks and hunts for the best power point on the power that it's given, the DC input. So there we go. i let it stabilize back out, get one more read, and I think that'd be enough to wrap it up. So 34.4 to 0.6 coming into the controller. It's indicating 19.1 amps. The JBD Smart BMS is indicating 19.4, 19.6 going into the battery. I say it's bouncing around because it's, it's tracking off of that. Okay, one more test with the power supply. I turned it way down to right at 18 volts. So let's see what it does at a very low voltage, how it, how it tracks when it's loaded. All right, the controller is starting to load it up now. So, hang around 18 volts, 18.2. It should be a little bit more stable right here since I'm not in the over VOC range on the controller. Here it's hanging around 18.2 volts, around 155, 156 watts going into the battery, indicating 10.9 amps on the controller. And 10.9 to 11 amps into the battery. Now I'm going to turn up the controller and see how quick it responds. So I'm turning up the controller. You can see the input voltage right here. So watch how it how quick it tracks. So I'm turning it up a little bit more. So I'll see how quick it responds. And then right at 30 volts on the power supply. And this is only an 8 amp power supply. So it is taking everything it can get out of the power supply. So I want to share my final thoughts on the battery of power Sunrock 20S charge controller. I'll start with what I don't like about it. 30 volts open circuit at 12 volt. I don't like that low of a VOC on a charge controller. 
I would like to see 50 or better, uh, you know, on something like this. You can work with 30, but remember at 30 volts through long wire leads, you're gonna get some voltage drop through the leads unless you just run big, huge wires and things like that. But this is not catered for off-grid power production. Even though I'm gonna be using it in a small system, this is catered more for RV marine, trolling motor, kayak fishing, camping outdoor stuff, you know, things like that. Where you got, you know, lightweight portable controller, you can stick that in your pocket, you can carry a battery like this in your hand and a folding solar panel on your back or whatever where you're going camping, you can have power. I mean, you pair that and a folder together, you got some power. You know, that's that's what it's catered for. I really like that it's a waterproof controller that can be used outdoors, you know, in the elements and things like that. And that's why I did not tear it apart for you to look at all the electronics inside and, and check it out any further because I'm going to be using this in an outdoor application where it can get some, some moisture and rain mist and things on it. So I didn't want to compromise the seal and the waterproof integrity of this unit. But if you get one and you wanted to be curious and investigate it, there are four screws right about this area right here under the cover. And you can probably, if you look close enough in this shot right here, you can probably see, I had it just a second, you can see a little indention. There's an indention mark right there for a screw and there's one right there. You can see it right there. Uh, you know, it's got four little screws right there. I took a little, little tiny magnet, you could feel it drag across the where the screws are so there 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 if you want to take it apart on your own and this controller is competitively priced compared to other 20 amp controllers on the market uh 30 day price on this i track usually track items for about 30 days before i give you a rough estimate of the price i've seen this controller depending on if you look on battery powers website or amazon anywhere from 60 to 69 dollars depending on if there's a coupon or promotion code going on so right in there with the ballpark of other 20 amp controllers. But remember, this one is waterproof for using outdoors and camping and things like that. And it's also got Bluetooth. So take that into consideration if you're price shopping a 20 amp controller similar to this. So special thanks to all y'all for watching the video today. Really appreciate that. Really appreciate it. Hit the like button. Really helps the channel. And thank you, Battery of Power, for sending this little Sunrock 20 for me to test and evaluate. And thank you for the hookup accessory so I can deploy this long term. So I'll be running the long term test and I'll give you an update. Or if something tears up or happens to it, I'll give you an immediate update. Appreciate everybody watching. Y'all have a good day. Take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one.